Hallelujah, hallelujah, hallelujah. I greet you in the matchless name of Jesus Christ. My name is Minister Dawn Davis. I am one of the ministers here at First Central Baptist Church, and I am here today to give you a word of encouragement, a word of hope, and a word to let you know that there is still peace and victory in all that we are facing. I need the oh, I need thee every hour. I need thee. Oh, bless me now. My Savior, Lord, I come to Thee. Father God, it's once again I stand in your presence, asking you to be here with me, asking you that I will decrease and will you increase. I pray that this word be a word of encouragement, a word of hope, a word, God, that will help someone through these perilous times. We bless you. We praise you, Lord, and we glorify you for what you are going to do. In Jesus' almighty name, amen, amen, and amen. Give an honor to God who is truly the head of my life, thanking my pastor for this opportunity to stand before you to give you a word of encouragement, thanking you, my ministers, my deacons, the congregation of First Central Baptist Church, and to you, you, my brothers and sisters, and I cannot forget my family, my husband, my children, and my parents. Thank you. Thank you, God. Thank you for this opportunity. Our word today will be coming from Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 3. Isaiah chapter 43, verses 1 to 3, and it reads as follows. But now, thus said the Lord that created thee, O Jacob, and he that formed thee, O Israel, fear not, for I have redeemed thee. I have called thee by thy name. Thou art mine. When thou passest through the waters, I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. When thou walkest through the fire, thou shalt not be burned. Neither the flame kindle upon thee. For I am the Lord thy God. I am the Holy One of Israel, thy Savior, I gave Egypt for thy ransom, Ethiopia and Saba for thee. Amen, amen, amen. And just for a few moments, I want to speak to you from the title, Fear Not, for I am with you. Fear not, for I am with you. As the children of Israel marched into capacity. God the creator gave them a word. Fear not. Although it will hurt, there will be challenges. You will endure suffering. You may even lose possessions. God was saying to them, fear not. God gave a word of hope, of grace, and of encouragement. When we examine the scripture closely, we see that the same God who was speaking to the Israelites is the same God who is speaking to us today. He is saying to the hurt, to the depressed, to the lonely, to the sick. He is talking to you, to me. He is saying, fear not, for I am with you. I will never leave you, nor will I ever forsake you. I know that we are living in some uncertain 
challenging times, but God is saying, fear not. I am here, I am here, and I am here with you. You see, my brothers and sisters, God has a special and a unique claim upon all of us because he is our creator and he knows how to take care of us. He is better than the State Farm advertisement that says, like a good neighbor, State Farm is here. No, it's like a good father. He is always there. He is he is not our insurance, but he is assurance that we are always protected, always sheltered, and always cared for. But you may be asking yourself, how can we not be afraid when we are seeing what we are seeing in this world today? Well, I'm glad you asked. Let's look at the text. The text opens up and it says, fear not. I have called you. You are mine. Fear not is a command, my brothers and sisters, that is accompanied by promises. I have called you. You are mine. There is an assurance that God knows what he is doing. Promises that no matter what comes against us, no matter what the circumstances may look like, no matter what it might smell like, God is right here with you. He has called you by name. The blessing is associated with your name. You see, your blessings are not mine, and my blessings cannot be yours. You are unique and special to God. He is our redeemer and our creator. He is saying that these dark times, these uncertain times, and let me make it live for you, let me put a name on it. These corona times, diabetes, hypertension, cancer, cannot, cannot, cannot outweigh the goodness of God. You see, God's grace is always going to pierce the dangers of what is around us. Knowing that we belong to God is a wonderful answer to all our fears. To know that he holds us, to know that he protects us, he cares for us, to know that he will finish his work in us gives us a sense of peace. That peace that stifles all fears, anxieties, and restlessness. But how can we achieve this peace over all these fears? I'm glad you asked. There are three simple steps. First step, we must always remember. Remember how and what God has done in your life before. How God has worked in your life when you faced other challenging situations. The children of Israel remembered how God healed, delivered, and divided the Red Seas for them. We too, my brothers and sisters, must remember how often God came to our rescue. How often God took us and made us brand new. He is the same God yesterday, today, and forevermore. And he changes not. Remembering, my brothers and sisters, helps us to put God back into the situation. Remembering helps us to increase our faith and decrease our fears, our anxieties, and our worries. Step two, we must rejoice. Yes, I said rejoice. Although trials are inevitable 
as the text reminds us when we go through the waters and when we walk through the fires and when we get that unfavorable report from the doctors or even when we lose our loved ones or even when we lose our jobs when we just want to give up and give in God is reminding us that his presence and his protection are always there with us God is strengthening us through our pains, our hurts, and our suffering. It may not feel like that when we are going through, but know for certain that our God, Jehovah Nisi, the banner over our lives, is always covering and is always supporting us. Trust God and rejoice. Hold on to God and rejoice. In our fear, rejoice. In your pain, rejoice. In your tribulation, rejoice. And he will see you through. And step number three, when you remember his goodness and when you have rejoiced through your trials, God will restore God will regain us to greater. God knows and he hears all your cries. He hears your prayers. He hears your petition. He knows your pain. He knows that you will become fearful. He knows that at times we feel like giving up, but he is saying to us right now, fear not and hold on. Trust in him with all your heart and lean not onto your own understanding. Remember, my brothers and sisters, the greatest blessing comes after the greatest battle. This too shall pass and we shall have victory. We are going to regain all that the enemy has stolen from us. After this pandemic, we will be stronger, we will be wiser, we will be better, we will be more unified, more people will know who God is, more people will keep their knees in prayer, more tongues will say, Lord, have mercy on us. More people will trust in God. So don't be afraid, don't give up, don't panic. This is a season of growth, of preparation, of purification, and of faith testing. Remember, nothing just happens. God knows. He hears our prayers. He knows our pains. He is familiar with our cries. He knows when you are overwhelmed, exhausted, and worried. Worried about how things will turn out. But he is saying to you, just like he said to the Israelites, fear not, fear not, fear not, for I am always with you. Rest in me, for I am always with you. Amen, amen, and amen.